Today I'm going to do a quick video on installing a linked pedal group kit on an NS series Coyote tractor. Mine happens to be the 4710H. Um, so this kit allows the engine to rev with the push of the forward motion and reverse motion pedals on the hydrostat rather than having to adjust the hand throttle. Um, so we're going to work through the instructions on this and see if we can't get it knocked out. So here's a look at the exploded view. So it appears to me that we've got two or three major sub-assemblies that have to be pre-assembled. Could have been done at the factory before we put it on the tractor. If it had been done at the factory, I think this would have been a pretty quick, simple, 10-minute little project. But on the bench here, we're going to get everything pre-assembled and go through that real quick. So starting with instructions one, we need this plate with some studs sticking out of it. We need this lever assembly. Uh, we need the micro switch to tell it on the dash whether it's in link pedal or not. And then we need to assemble all of that onto this plate. So that's, that's going to be our first focus here. So here's the piece that we're looking at. Uh, mine, the larger shaft, I had to polish some rust off of it. Um, the smaller shaft that we're going to be concerned about had was well painted in order for the piece to fit on it i had to polish all the paint off of it um, so we're going to be using for this assembly we're going to be using one of each of those snap rings one of each of those hairpins uh, there's a plastic handle we're going to be using this device a spacer and a spring here's our switch assembly and this is what the switch rides on. Uh, screw and a carter pin for the switch and a couple of washers for spacers. So I'm gonna put the camera up here and we'll get started. So like I said, I've, I've already prepped this. It says to take one of these larger snap rings and put it on the bottom of the shaft. There's a groove in this shaft. That this snap ring locks into. And then we're supposed to grease the shaft. Doesn't mention greasing the little one, but I'm going to go ahead and grease the little one while I've got my fingers dirty here. Oops, that's not the shaft. All right, now it says next install this i'm going to put just a dab of grease on it this little shaft here we're supposed to put they're calling it a spacer on and we need for this one i've figured out that we need the medium there's three sizes of these hairpins we need the medium one for this application here uh, then we're supposed to take the handle and fit it on here. This is just a plastic handle. We're supposed to fit it down onto there. Put just a touch more grease in these bushings. There's brass bushings in this. I had to actually lap them with sandpaper in order to get everything to fit on this shaft correctly after I polished the shaft. This goes on with this roller is what I'm going to call it that we just put on here just above 
little small shaft here. Then we're going to need, I'm going to hold off on that for a minute. It says to put the top snap ring on here, but I believe when we go to putting this next assembly on, this one's going to be interfering. So well, we're going to hold that for just one minute. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is put this switch, which it has a nipple sticking out that goes in a plain hole in a hole that is screwed down to the top of this metal plate. Um, I have a screw. Screw and a carter pin came in one bag by themselves here. Try to put enough to keep that from ever backing out. So the tong on the switch goes toward the metal bushing. Um, so then we should be ready to install this. So we're putting this metal bushing on the smaller shaft with a Carter key hole drilled in it. It's going to drop down on there like this. What we're doing is this is our selector handle. And the switch tells it whether we're in link pedal or out of link pedal. So the next thing we need is to go ahead and put our other large snap ring on the top. And I'm trying to hurry for the expedience of the video and I've actually skipped a step. There is a lower snap ring that goes on the smaller post. There's a groove down at the very bottom of it, a quarter inch up from the plate. And now we can put the switch assembly on. And now we need a spring. There's two springs in a bag. I'm not going to go through all of the part numbers. Um, I'll have to stop and focus my glasses to read over one of them. If you're actually going to do this, you'll have all the part numbers on all the bags. It's just a matter of... Uh, and it looks like in the picture they have the wire below the spring. So now... We've got this assembly. I can get it to function here. There we go. I'd say a dab of grease on what they were calling a spacer, which is actually a roller that snaps back and forth between these two is pretty important. Otherwise, it would be dragging in this plate. So now we need the larger of these hairpins to trap the top of this second piece we put on. Uh, we have to have a washer, a machine washer to go on top of there. Then the hairpin goes in. Clean my grease off everything. Dust will be sticking to that down the road. So the next thing we're going to do is remove the four bolts holding the lower steering sector. Got four bolts. It says not to lose them. I've already pulled the bolts. We pulled the original plastic cover out of the way. Okay, so now we're on the right side below the ignition um, in the center of the console um, behind the steering servo i found a wire plug taped down it has a tag on it that says link pedal 
So now I'm going to take that and plug it into the assembly that we've built. Um, I'm going to take two bolts that were described in the uh, instructions and install this assembly onto the tractor. Uh, we got to manipulate the wiring harness to get this assembly to fit. Make sure those wires are back into the center of the console so they're not in the mechanism. So this assembly is simply to engage and disengage the link pedal and its ability to uh, work. So we can turn it on or off from here. Of course I didn't mention but there was a little cap on the end of that wire I had to remove in order to be able to use that portion of the harness. Making sure all my wires are in good shape. That's a pretty positive feel there. It's definitely either engaged or disengaged. Okay, now we're supposed to take the new steering column cover that has a cutout in it on the right side for this application that came in the kit. and reinstall it using the same bolts that we removed earlier. Um, by the way, those were a, a 10 millimeter. Um, the ones that I just installed were a 12 millimeter. So tools to this point are a 10 and 12 millimeter socket. Um, snap ring pliers, a pair of pliers, a Phillips screwdriver, I believe that's it for the moment. feel the hole back there. Okay, got those done. I couldn't hardly do them on camera. I was beat, beating and banging on the camera. So the next thing is to take this piece of metal and put it over and it gets attached to these three bolt holes. These are number 12 heads as well. There's actually five 
bolts that are all alike in one bag plus two extras. The five that are all just the same are the ones you use for the operation that we've just done. These three and the two inner ones. Then the instruction says to put the label onto this piece of metal. And of course, one of these positions is on, one's off. And so I'm actually going to put this low on here so it's easily seen from the seat. And so essentially we've just put a linkage bracket so here's where a linkage cable will terminate and here's where the part that gets pulled on and will terminate okay so we finished with number nine at the tractor on the first sub assembly um, we come back to the instructions and we're at number 10 and it gets pretty vague as far as from number 10. Um, the next picture they show just has several pieces pre-assembled um, with a few numbers. So I'm going to lay them out on the table a little better than they've got just throwed in their picture here. Because I've, I've taken the time off screen to figure it all out here. Um, so this piece they're calling number 12 which is bracket linkage lower this piece and in, in the picture shows to be painted which it's galvanized uh, no biggie there just a little confusion on what parts you're supposed to have in your hand um, so then you need these two pieces small hole in that direction big hole in this direction um, the two holes further down than that then you need this piece which has a bushing in it has a little stud one single stud out the bottom it needs to sit just like that this next piece has two studs sticking out the bottom sorry about that it needs to be oriented just like that so what we're going to do to start with doesn't say in the instructions, but I'm going to put a dab of grease on this shaft. Way too much grease here. And it goes on to this piece with the stud sticking down and toward us. No spacers or washers or anything at the bottom. And then this next piece goes on, which has bushings in it. It goes on to where the two top holes are lined up. Hole and hole here and here. Grab my rag. Um... We're going to need a peculiar looking bolt, but we're down to not very many bolts left. So this one has a shoulder, um, then it has a carter pin hole through it, and then it has a self-locking nut all in the same bag. So we need to take the bolt and drop it through from the vantage point we're at. We need to drop it through that hole, through the farthest hole in the other plate where that shoulder sitting on the bottom plate we're going to need two 14 millimeter tools snug this up with
I'm giving that a good snug. It sits down against the shoulder so it can't get out of there. Um, so we get that part done. Then with this oriented just like that, bolt down. There again, I'm going to put a tiny dab of grease. I'm going to flip everything over so we can see better from the bottom. So there's a pin there with a, a hole in it. Well, let me back up. Let's go ahead and get finished up here. We've got a machine washer to go on top of here. And then we've got a uh, snap ring that goes on the top of that to hold everything onto that shaft that's on the metal. Now let's flip it everything over. Um, we were going on this shaft here where we look something like this. Um, I read all the instructions. I don't see where there's supposed to be a washer. I would think there would need to be a washer here and then uh, a hairpin. If there's room, I'll go back and find a washer, and I believe there is going to be room to put a washer there. Um, 29. 29. is a snap pin. That's what they're calling a hairpin, a snap pin. I've actually got three of those left to put somewhere. Okay, so then we're up to the spring. We have to put a spring between the base here and this pin here. Looks like something should be tied to that, but the picture they've got is very grainy. Um, very little detail going on on it. Okay, so back over on the right side of the tractor, under the floor pan, here are the two link pedals. <coughs> Directly behind that is a, uh, let's call it a body mount right here. I've already stuck the two bolts into the bracket. It has pre-threaded holes of where this sub-assembly we just built up goes. Um, so I'm going to get it put on. So here's our assembly fully installed, or actually not installed, but mounted to the tractor. The next step it wants us to do is connect some of this linkage to linkage that's already provided on the tractor. So I'm going to move the camera and get set up where we can see it. Okay, maybe this camera angle will do what we're trying to get to. I can get a hand back in here. Is this linkage right here comes off of the link pedals. When you move the link pedals, it moves. So then we need to take this loose flopping plate and connect it on the front side with a pin. I need to reach right where the cam. The only good place to reach is where the camera view is from, because that is the only access to this. So there's our pin. There's our plate. And we're supposed to put a washer. And 
and then a little hairpin. Come on, sugar. And let's get me a pair of pliers. There we go. And that's connected. Okay, so in rereading the instructions, it actually didn't say the hairpin there. It said a split pin and then bend it. So that's what I've I've worked through the camera access here and replaced that pin with the Carter pin. Okay, the instructions for connecting the cables was really vague, really sucked. So there's two cables. One, the part number ends with 56, one with 57. The 56 cable is the one closest to us right here. Um, it runs up to the on-off lever that we installed. It also has the L shape on the end of it. So it goes through that pin and then has a cross pin, a hair pin on the back side of it. So in the off position, which it currently is in, if we push the pedals, nothing really happens. If we move it to the on position, Well, you, you can see that all it does is picks up that piece right there. There was a pin on the back side of this piece. Right where my finger is pointing. When you put it in the on position, then when you push the pedal, it carries that other linkage forward. which pulls on the other cable, which goes up to the throttle body. It's the second cable, the outermost cable. There was already a place for it to land right there. There was already a place right there. So it just has a ball on the end of it. You drop the ball through that top hole. It locks in. So when I push on the throttle, of course, I've not done any adjustment. Doesn't look like the instructions have any adjustment instructions to them. So I'm going to do a little tinkering with that and we'll come back. Okay, here we are on the instrument cluster. Linked pedal. No linked pedal. Nothing happened. Link pedal. Okay, so the way I've got it adjusted right now, it revs the tractor up pretty high, about 2,000 RPM with the forward pedal. Um, I guess there's some engineering in it that only brings it up to 1,700 if you hit the back pedal all the way to the floorboard. Um, I don't think there's any adjustment to change that. Um, so let me get back down on the floor one more time here. So the way you adjust these linkages, of course, is by moving those two nuts, which shortens and tightens the piece of cable. Um, you also have the same thing down here. 
at this end I get the camera all the way down here um, so the near one was the one that trips the on and off and what I did was I adjusted it to where this floating plate that connects to the link to, to, to the pedals is up almost tight against the rod that's on the back side of here that this weld holds in so when I first put it on it was so low that it was up here on this ramp part and it wasn't accelerating very far um, so when we disengage it it's far enough below that that there's no action um, those two plates are just almost where they can butt into each other though that may be a problem that has to be addressed we'll look into that if it does become a problem um, I haven't had it out of the shop yet but so far looks good anyway I, I hope this helps somebody down the road um, I think it'll make the NS um, a lot more like the NX as far as the link pedal goes um, that was the only thing the, the between the differences in the two tractors that was the only thing that was on my wish list off of the NX was the linked pedal because um, I actually prefer things a bit simpler and more mechanical driven you know the NX the control pedals are all uh, position sensors rather than direct linkage like you can see on this one it's all direct linkage goes right into the transmission um, but that's going to do it for this video.